Are you an INFP who is curious about the compatibility with an ESTJ, what you can learn from them, why you clash with them, and how you can generally make your life better while dealing with ESTJs? See, as INFPs, we sometimes have conflicts with ESTJs, to put it nicely, because of how our personality type is structured. So in this video, I'm going to break down the elements, the cognitive functions, we're going to personify them, make them like characters in an RPG, so that you can get a quick and easy grasp of how the different cognitive functions work. In order to do that, let's go over to this web screen over here. What's it called? Go over to the... I'm sharing my screen. That's what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, you can't see my face. I can't see my face. Okay, so here we are. We're going to talk about the different cognitive functions for both of the personality types. We're going to be using the RPG model. So over here, we have the four different cognitive functions in their order for the INFP, which I call the innovating soul. So let's look at the resonating soul first, and we'll go in through these others, okay? The resonating soul is introverted feeling. And what this is, is a judging function. It's a way of making decisions based off feeling, based off evaluating emotions, evaluating the impact on harmony that a choice will make. And it's introverted, so it's going internal and it's saying, how does this resonate with me? Hence the name, resonating soul, which all you can see is ungroup right now. There we go. So this is the hero of the story for INFPs. This is the leader. This is the, the character that you put up in front and you trust it that this quest that this hero wants to go on is going to be the best one for your life. As a mentor-like character within our story, we have the innovating explorer. It's extroverted intuition, the perceiving function. It's, and what that is doing is it's learning about the world through connecting the dots and through this explosive firework-like display of idea generation. What is this thing? What could it be? What could it be used for? How can we uh, shake things up? And through that, we learn about ourselves. And we learn about ourselves through this uh, resonating soul, introverted feeling function. Then we have our tertiary function. This is the newbie, the rookie within our questing party, the one that's got a good heart, but sometimes it puffs itself up too big. And it's like, I can handle it. I can do it. I can do it, boss. Just <laughs> it's like scrappy do. Just let me at him. And uh, it doesn't quite work out like that. Um, because it's, it's not as leveled up as the other two characters. So the stabilizing guardian is technically called introverted sensing. This is another way of perceiving, learning about the world, and it is through senses. So it's saying, what is this thing? How can I understand it through my senses? And it's introverted, so it's in this defensive stance of reflecting subjectively over past captured experiences and implementing those into the present and the future by compare and contrast. It's not a, a place of high skill for INFPs, but it's a place of safety and comfort. It's our protection, our armor, our relief state, as I call it within the RPG model. And then you have the strategizing commander, extroverted thinking. Okay, This is another decision-making process, and it is about logic and using that in the external world, organizing things to reach a goal, to achieve something, uh, checking the metrics, delegating tasks. And with that, you can see on the other side over here, uh, the ESTJ is flipped. Okay, so our strength is their weakness. This is the maverick of our questing party, the Raphael, the one that just kind of like goes off and does its own thing. Or it's like this buggy AI escort that gets stuck in rocks. And you're like, come on, please just be part of the team. We have this aspiration as well as an inferiority complex around it. So it makes things difficult. But as you can see, ooh, I wonder if I can do, ooh, fancy. Ooh, this is gonna be not as elegant as I had hoped. Okay, you see those are in different places. Oh, is this even necessary? I don't know. Okay, and these are over here. And the middle ones are flipped too. So this means that what we perceive as a strength is not perceived as a strength for ESTJs. And what they use as their strength, the commander, as the stabilizing commander, well, they're like, well, suck it up. Who cares about how you feel? It's not that important. Like, get the stuff done that you need to get done. 
So you can see where there's um, conflict and contrast because these two different questing parties are misaligned. They're going on different paths. They're doing different approaches to tackle a goal. Okay, and also you can see within these two here the mentor of our story and the rookie of our story and their story are both flipped. So what we seem, what we perceive as good advice and advice that we would like to give other people as INFPs, it's like, um, you know, have you thought about it like this? Have you tried this? You know, explore different ways of thinking or ways of feeling. Well, for us, that's a strength. But for the ESTJ, that's the, that's the rookie. So it's a place of comfort, but it's not a place of like high skill. It's let me just, you know, let me escape into my imagination a little bit to reduce this stress. And let's imagine what's going on in these different pursuits. It could be a business pursuit or something like that. Okay. And what our rookie is, this guardian, that's a place of safety and a bit of trauma. It's this childlike, childish area for us. That's a strength for the ESTJ. They trust their past and they implement their past as a strength into solving tasks and accomplishing their goals. Whereas we check how do we feel about this thing? And then we lean over to the, the explorer and say, well, how can I make this happen? Let's think of some new ideas to make it happen. So I hope that makes sense right there. Now, dun, dun, dun. I didn't think I was going to do that, did you? Okay, and you can't really see it. Dang. Colors. The power of gray skull. We have these different characters and let's just kind of, whoa, let's just kind of imagine how they're going to approach this task, okay? Let me uh, make it bigger. Everything's better when it's bigger. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm going to erase. Uh, 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 uh. So we can just look at the characters and how they would approach. We have this evil kind of water demon thing that's bursting out of this temple uh, courtyard, okay? So the resonating soul for both, both characters, both personality types is likely going to check like, you know, how do I feel right now? Is defeating this thing aligned with my quest? Well, does that thing have a sentient essence to it? Like maybe it's not actually evil. Maybe it's just confused or misplaced or something like that. Or maybe it actually has a reason for, for doing what it's doing. And that's also kind of looking at the stabilizing guardian. People who use the stabilizing guardian, introverted sensing, as a strength are likely going to appreciate that the past shapes who we've become. Now, it's not the arbiter, it's not the final decision of who you are, but the upbringing that you have is likely going to shape who you are becoming. Yeah? But the innovating explorer over here is probably going to say, well, like, is it really that strong? Like, well, I don't know. Let's, let's poke it. Let's see what happens. Let's throw a little rock at it or shoot a firework at it or something like that to see how we can, you know, test this thing and see what it's capable of. So then we can react immediately, instant feedback, it's extroverted, to what is happening, what this thing is doing. Again, the stabilizing guardian is going to check in with... Um, with his own past, have I dealt with something like this before? Do I know anything about it? Do, is there some lore about this thing that would be helpful for us to defeat it here? Um, and then the strategizing commander is going to say, okay, well, we need to find a, a weakness. Like, what's the most effective thing that we can do here? We need to be decisive and take some action to see what happens. And then we can adjust and we can get some feedback from there and um, optimize our skills, optimize our attack and approach to it, and go for that forward momentum and capitalizing on any, any weaknesses maybe that we create or any weaknesses that we find. So you see how all these different characters work, right? Now remember, as the INFP, we lead with the soul. So this is the one that's going to decide how we approach this beast here. 
and our commander might just run away. <laughs> it's not going to be as, as strong and firm and aggressive, maybe, as, as an ESTJ who would say, like, no, we got this. We can handle it. Or maybe we can't. It would make a firm, decisive assessment of that, probably. And as the soul is like, I'm afraid, I don't know what to do, and it kind of runs away. Maybe I should get some actual pictures for these instead of just different character emblems here. Okay, and for the ESTJ, oops, these are flipped as well. Okay, so it's going to lead with a decisive action, probably. And it's going to check in with the past, what worked in the past, what didn't work. And it might, might come over to the innovating explorer and say, well, okay, you know, how can, we, how can we test it even more? But for all of us, we tend to stick with our hero, our mentor, our dominant function, and our auxiliary function. These other ones are characters within our story, and there are four other ones that also play a role, but they are not usually as you know, upfront as, as these ones. So I hope you have a, an interesting and unique perspective over how these characters would work and bring this into like a daily task or a relationship and you can see how they're going to interact differently, okay, when these are all flipped around. So when you are working together, hopefully in a relationship or at work, in a career or something like that, just notice that these are the different dynamics that are going on for the INFP and the ESTJ. And so... When you notice that, noticing is great. Most people don't notice that. No, most people don't know this stuff, so they cannot notice it. But now that you have language for it and you have this um, metaphorical glue of RPGs and character types that you can use to, to quickly kind of get a sense of how the parts of this other person are working to accomplish their task or how they're working within you. you know, what are they doing? What is their approach? then you can use that to tailor your approach to dealing with the other person or the task. There are compromises, and there are also strengths that both types have. So leverage those, lean into those. You know, if you're doing, um, I don't know, accounting or business managing, maybe leaning onto the commander and the guardian, so more ESTJ heavy stuff, is going to be the right approach. Maybe it needs a, a sprinkle of the soul. Maybe it needs like some one-on-one -on -one individual peopling infused within the company to make sure that the company doesn't become too focused on effectiveness and efficiency and that it actually has that, you know, human component to it. And of course, that's not to say that ESTJs can't do soul stuff or explorer stuff or INFPs can't do commander stuff or guardian stuff. But we naturally lean into our strengths. So make sure that you focus on your own strengths that you bring to the world, as well as appreciating the strengths that other people bring into the world. And the big secret to all this is if you can appreciate those characters within you, if you stop hating on your commander as an INFP or as an ESTJ, if you stop hating on your resonating soul, and you appreciate your emotions, or as an NFP, you appreciate organizing tasks and putting things in a calendar, um, scheduling, cleaning up your room, those kind of things, you will have more appreciation for other people because you can understand their struggle more and you can understand where they're coming from. It is such a speed hack to relationships and fulfillment in your career as well as just your, your hobbies, your natural pursuits in life the things that you like to do. It makes everything easier when you're not fighting against yourself. If you want to know more about ESTJs and INFPs, you can check out the links above, all right? Let me know how this approach worked. It's quite different, uh, but it's something that I do all the time. I just didn't really have a way of sharing it. But maybe this works. All right, let me know down below in the comments. Good luck, have fun. Peace. I'm going to play a game. <laughs>